What's up, beautiful collectors and Transformer fans? Once again, it's the one and only Optobotomist coming at you with another video review. And on today's episode, thanks to the absolutely incredible support by the folks over at Hasbro, who were kind enough to provide this figure for me to review, we're going to be taking a look at the new Transformers Legacy Deluxe Class Dead End. The next member of the Stubdicons is here, and we are that much closer to having a completed Menasaur. For the package, much like all the new Legacy figures, you have this really nice Transformers text along the side, you have the Generation logo right there, a very cool image of him in his vehicle mode. Of course, you got the open... Nah. Come around to the side. You have an up-close image of him, which is kind of split, and then you have a little bit further of an image. That's kind of neat. Come around to the other side. You got several different characters that are out in the Legacy line. And then when you come to the back of the package, you can see that he transforms in 15 steps. And of course, if you really want to, you can scan this little QR code and get a bit of a bio form. But for the packaging on this guy, that's about it. So without further ado, let's get him out here and see how cool he actually is. And here we have Dead End opened up out of his packaging and obviously in his vehicle mode. And once again, Hasbro has done a terrific job of recreating a very well-known G1 character. And with the inclusion of Dead End, we are now just one Stunticon, that being Breakdown, away from realizing a fully completed Menasaur. And I know I've talked about this before, but I really feel like Hasbro is firing on all cylinders. And that is definitely the case with this guy. As you can see, very, very reminiscent of his original G1 self. The style of the car is very spot on. The colors look really good. You can see here at the top, you can plug his weapons in there. And these are really nice as well. These are unique molds. Uh, to my knowledge, I don't think we've gotten these before. But you can see that they, what they did was they actually, it looks like it's molded in this black plastic. But the little sight and then the barrel have been painted in this very beautiful metallic purple. I really dig that. And it even kind of looks like a little bit of a harpoon. That's kind of funny. But the vehicle is, is also very gorgeous. You got this very nice maroon color. You have this gold and silver stripe that goes down the driver's side. Even when you look at the front with the headlights, that has a very nice gunmetal gray paint. Same thing here on the sides with the actual rims and or hubcaps of the tire. Everything on here looks really very, very good. Now, he cleans up decently. One thing, though, that I will say is that this front section here does kind of scrape if it doesn't get fully compressed up there mine works perfectly fine but you really do have to make sure that you get everything lined up and squeezed in there tight also sometimes when you come around to the back it's not really doing it right now but sometimes this little back section doesn't like staying completely closed off you really have to push these bits down to get them to completely sandwich but all in all very nice looking you got this very cool glossy black paint that goes around kind of replicating windows. Just really a very, very sharp, very 80s style looking car. Now, I'm not going to bring all the Stunticons out. We, it's it's going to be a mess, especially trying to transform Menasaur. But I will still give you a comp comparison. So as you can see, here you have Dead End and Wild Rider. And again, Scale-wise works perfectly fine. Uh, the vehicle mode is roughly about the same. You can see that Wild Rider is actually a little bit longer, at least here in vehicle mode. One thing that I definitely think that uh, Wild Rider excels at are these translucent uh, red windows. I think those look really cool. Or is these ones are just painted on there. They still look nice and they're not really broken up or anything. But you can see that the scale is as it should be. And while Wild Rider here usually makes up the leg... In the combined form of Menasaur, Dead End typically becomes one of the arms, more specifically the left arm. And much like Drag Strip, all you do, I'm not going to do a, a full on Menasaur situation. I'm just going to show you how he kind of combines and then I'm going to do a full on Menasaur review when that comes around. But much like Drag Strip, you just come around here to the bottom, you uh, get this lined up, and you find the little hole. No, sorry. Wait, 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 no, there we go. Yeah, you get the holes lined up. You got the posts here that kind of move into this area. And then you just push that in, getting that pushed in as much as possible. Now, I have seen some people complain about how there's like this space here and it doesn't go as nearly as flush. Um, That's definitely true. Uh, I, I don't think it really bothers me all that much, but 
uh, you can see some space in there. Now, if you wanted to do the more traditional G1 toy look for this Stunticons and Minasaur, you can leave it just like this. And I love how this is built into it. Super, super cool. But what most people are going to want to do is the full-on combined mode. And when you actually, or more the animation mode, I should say, when you have it kind of situation situated like this, you can separate it, as we all know, hinge this all the way down, bring this down what's going on get that down there fold this in this will lock into the shoulder and now you have the full arm for uh Minasaur. and i love that we saw that before with drag strip so it's nothing new but this is how he's uh, going to end up looking and i just i love the fact that you can have have either the and i'm just kind of squeezing that trying to get that squeezed in as much as possible to see if there's any real way to fix that some and it doesn't really seem like it uh, but I love the fact that they make it so that you can choose. You could either have the G1 toy look or the G1 cartoon. I just think that that's fantastic that they give us that option. So getting this back and then you can put that there. Collapse that down. Bring that back. That'll sandwich back together. Transform. And now it's fully assembled back. I mean... That's just super, super fun, if you ask me. Now, to transform them, uh, I'm going to take these and kind of just bring those down just to kind of get those out of the way. This part here can get a little bit tricky because you have to... This is where I need to get that little guitar pick, but you want to pull this away from the body. And this definitely it does not have a lot of space to grab hold of things. So you're going to pull that away like that. There we go. We'll just bring everything here. And then separate that. We'll worry about that top part later. Bring this down. You can split these legs. Kind of hinge this back. And then you got a little gap section right here. Which will lock in to this little tab. Put that there. Do that on this side. Line that up. Squeeze that in. Just like, is that in there? There we go. There we go. These are the feet. Um... We'll, we'll get to it. We, we will get to it. Uh, but let's see. Then you're going to pull this out here. Pull this out here. Gonna bring this down. There we go. And take this whole section. You want to split this. Swivel that down. Swivel that down. This you kind of bring there. Get that pulled all the way back. Fold the head up. Let's see. Let me get that pulled around here. Take this, bring that back all the way, hinge this up. What's happening? Swivel this around. There we go. It gets in there tight. Bring that around. There we go. Bring that up. And then you can take this and you'll connect that together. Then this part right here actually comes up and then locks everything back up. So if you didn't have that there, kind of push that there, hinge that all the way down. Straighten that, straighten that, take these tires, rotate these up and around like that, and then take this, rotate this around. Do that on both sides. And when you're done, there you have Dead End in his, for the most part, very cool looking robot mode. <laughs> and Despite the fact that I really do like both his transformation as well as his vehicle mode, I definitely think that his robot mode is the weakest of all aspects of this. Primarily uh, from about the thighs down. The rest of them I think looks great. You can see he holds his weapons very, very nicely. You can also, if you didn't really want to, you got some like holes here. Put 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 the guns there. Maybe maybe that'll make his legs look better. <laughs> Shoot up in his face, I guess. Uh, you got some little posts back here. If you you know wanted to, you could put that. I I don't know why you would want to, but you you could do that. Uh, but the rest of them does look really nice. Uh, I will say that he does have, at least on mine, a, a fairly loose torso. I could probably tighten that. I'm sure that's just some type of a, a mushroom peg or something. But some pledge with, fu with future shine could probably fix that up nicely. But you can see that his head sculpt is spot on. I, I, again, I love what they did with it. The torso and everything looks really good. Got a little Decepticon logo there. Arms look really nice. 
There's a lot that's uh, really good about the figure. The backpack cleans up very well. It doesn't have that alternate kind of transformation like Wild Riders did. But you come down to the leg section and it it, it just... It seems very uninspired, uh, to be honest. I mean... I don't know. Maybe if the spoiler was a little bit bigger or something. I, I, honestly, I don't know. It's just... Very flat. It, it just does not look good uh, to, to me. Now, I did talk about how I feel like Hasbro is firing on all cylinders. And I definitely still think that they are. But that doesn't mean that they don't every now and then do something that I think could have been done better. And the legs are definitely a case of that. For comparison, let's get him standing here. And we'll bring uh, his uh, good buddy, the one and only Wild Rider, into it. And you can see that, again, scale... Works pretty decently. He might be... Well, no, they're, they're about the same height right there at the head. Uh, I do like how Dead End's backpack compresses a whole lot more. This one, I feel like it really could if, if you did some extra stuff. But you, you got the little butt flap hanging out here. I mean, that's it's... Obviously, you can leave that up and you, you can fiddle with this however you really want to. You can rotate it around. Personal preference on how you want to... Uh, can handle that backpack but you can see that the, the legs just look better on him i mean maybe it's just because he's got feet and he just doesn't really look like he has feet but so i've seen some people rotate this um i don't really think i mean that that looks a little bit better uh but honestly i i still think that it looks kind of bad like with these little knee sections kind of hanging out here i mean that just kind of sticks out uh, it and that definitely makes it look a little bit better with some kind of a feat, but it, it's just kind of unfortunate that it is what it is. Truthfully, a lot of people are going to keep these in the Menasaur mode, so I don't know if it's that big of a deal, honestly, but uh, they have been doing a really good job as of late, and that is a, a bit of a letdown. First articulation, the head is uh, on a swivel, so you can get a good range of motion with that. Shoulders move forward and back. And now you have a rotation joint there just at the bicep. You can hinge here at the elbow. Nothing at the wrist. That's all locked into place. As you can see, the waist is a little bit loose. It's not too detrimental or anything. It doesn't really affect the stability or anything. So that's not too terribly bad. The hips are on these universal joints that move forward and back. In and out. Rotates at the upper part of the thigh. Bends here at the knee. And then uh, you do have this. And they, they do have ankle tilt on them as well. So... You know, maybe if maybe if it was like shifted, if it didn't have so much in the back, maybe if it was shifted a little bit. I, I don't know, just give a little bit more sticking out here. And I, I guess I, I honestly I don't know, but he's still a good toy. I, I still really like the way that he looks. Um, I just definitely think that there's aspects that it could that could have been improved on him, and that's just a personal uh, opinion, I suppose. But in general, a solid solid toy. Now, first transformation back. First, we're going to rotate these arm panels around and rotate the tire down just like that. Do that on this arm as well. Rotate that panel. Bring the tire down right there. Just kind of sit that along the side. Then you want to take these. Oh, I'll pull this away from the body. This you're going to separate. And then this will actually fold towards the back. All the way get that in there pull that all the way back and then that will collapse all the way down then you can take these shoulder bits and then and, and uh, you know in terms of the transformation they're doing a lot of really cool stuff i really do like it fold that up just like that and then you're going to bring these down you got a little groove area right here where you're just going to fit these arms so just kind of slot that in just like that and then bring this piece down Fold this all the way down. And this is where you really have to make sure you squeeze everything and get it kind of pushed up there as much as possible so that the uh, little bottom section here doesn't really get in the way too much. Come around here to these legs. I'm going to take that. Fold this. Open this piece up. Or do it. Oh, wait. Hold on. Ah, come on. Can you get that? Pull that. There we go. Just like that. Is that a good... That tab's in there really securely. And then bring these back and down. 
and then that will clip in. Do that on this side. Collapse this up and in. Bring the two halves together. Take this, you can slide this up, push that down. Now I see a lot of people are kind of missing out on this step, but you actually got some little tabs right here that get that all squeezed together as much as possible. You need to make sure that you push this all the way down and you'll hear it kind of lock into place. So I see a lot of people not really pushing that all the way down, but once you do that and squeeze everything, that should kind of situate itself pretty decently back there. But when you're done, there you have dead end back in his vehicle mode. Like I said, overall, the, the figure is a win for me. Vehicle mode wise, I think looks spectacular. And I really enjoy the transformation. What they did with the shoulder, the chest, the arms is really quite fun and different. As opposed to basically just flattening them out along the body. It kind of does that, but in a slightly different way. And it's really kind of refreshing. And then two thirds of the robot mode is solid. From about the thighs up, he looks really very good. The head sculpt is really nice. The paint applications still look really good. I really like the way that his uh, little backpack kind of compresses fairly decently along his back. But from about his knees down, he definitely suffers. For me, it's not that big of a deal because he is going to be in the Menasaur mode more often than not. Which means this vehicle mode needs to be the best because this is what we're going to be seeing mostly and i think that that's what hasbro's intention is to make a vehicle mode that really does accurately depict how he looked as an arm and truthfully he does that really really well so i would really still very much recommend this figure as a standalone decepticon he looks good but that combined mode just looks amazing so all that being said, if Dead End is a figure that you would like to add to your collection, he is hitting various retail locations right now. Or as always, you can do the real simple thing and go online to places like Big Bad Toy Store, Amazon, Entertainment Earth, or even Hasbro Pulse, where you can swing on over to those sites and check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of the wide range of Transformer figures. Once again, I want to send a huge shout out to the folks over at Hasbro for providing me with this figure for the purposes of my review. And as always, friends, please remember that the real trouble with the world is that too many people grow up. Thank you all so much for tuning in and watching and taking the time to be a kid. Destroy the evil